Eric Ten Hag is the man charged with genuinely rebuilding Manchester United. It's got to work this time. It hasn't worked before. And any rebuild we've done and tinkering here or there, we're still left in, in this messy situation. But it is hopefully going to be different under Eric Ten Hag. But what is his master plan? I'm not talking about the Oasis album. Decent album, though. We are going to run through it in this video with insight from James Ducker from The Telegraph into exactly the workings behind the scenes and what Ten Hag and Murto are deciding on. The principles that he's going to be building into this squad, into this recruitment, and how that's going to drive change in every part of this Manchester United first team. This will be an exciting video. I'm looking forward to doing this one. I hope you do learn something by the end of it. And if you do, consider subscribing to United People's TV. It's free. Just go down there. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well. You get a little message every time we go live with a video like this so you don't miss any. But let's dive straight into this article. As I said, I've done one earlier this week on, on, on James Ducker from The Telegraph, somebody who I consider extremely reliable, certainly gets his information from Manchester United, a bit like Simon Stone from the BBC. But let's run through this and how Manchester United plan to fix their failing squad. And we all know, I suppose, what the first... Maybe not what the first thing is, but one of the most important things. It's all about identity. It's all about that defining style of play. James Ducker there calls it a Frankenstein squad, a squad that's been made up of multiple managers, like multiple jigsaws in a box that aren't the same jigsaw, and you don't really know how to get it all together. That's what this United squad is there. Uh, they're saying that United felt the Ragnick's period gave them time to think very deliberately about exactly what they want from the team. It goes down there and look, was some, all the, everything right now is summed up as follows by a source close to the process. The team needs attacking football. It needs high energy, high pace, and it needs to press. It needs to provide a platform where United have star players who can perform and deliver. The club want technical ability and athletic ability, but also mental resilience and robustness. Now, that's not exactly going to be groundbreaking news to any of you. A lot of the characteristics, there are a lot of things that we have discussed for a long, long time. It really is. But we do need a defining style of play. And I think that's probably been a big core reason why a lot of these issues still exist. Because if we go over here now and we take a look at the tactics board, we all know full well exactly how Eric Ten Hag is going to play. He's going to line up in a 4-2-3-1. He's going to play out from the back with the ball. We're going to have to have two ball-playing centre-backs who are comfortable playing with two decent midfielders. We know this is pretty much the crux of the problem right now. And basically, as it stands, Ten Hag's identity won't work until we sign new... Basically, all of that stinks, really. Now, apart from Varane. And maybe it's unfair to say Fred stinks. But that is the big problem. And that is the big reason. Let me move that over there a little bit. Oh, look at that. Now he's central. Isn't that nice? Um... But that has to change. And if we're talking about this idea of an identity and a defining style, that's where it is. But at the core of that, of course, is the players. And how spectacularly have we got that recruitment wrong? That here that Ten Hag has been very clear at highlighting the profile of players he wants. And there are three questions that he's asking. Can they outrun people? Can they outplay people? Can they outfight people? Now, again, you're going to come here and say, Sam, you're speaking in cliches. But I think I've told you about this before. We have to speak in cliches because we've got it so spectacularly wrong that we're a bad cliche at the moment. And I'll tell you one thing about this that I really do want to say with the idea there, can they outrun people? Can they outplay people? Can they outfight people? Talking there about character and leadership and about using the example of how bad we were when we were, I've already done this before, like when our asses fell out and we went top of the league under Solskjaer because we were so good Solskjaer had instilled this incredible underdog mentality at Manchester United. It's why we came from behind so often. It's why we actually turned into a team that was difficult to beat. But also why we had no idea what to do when we went top. Because the underdog mentality is very different to the mentality when you're top of the pile and people are chasing you. And we didn't know what to do at that point. But this idea, I know we're speaking in cliches. But there really is some crossover from what Ralph Radnick was trying to do. And why I had some real excitement when he came in. His philosophy was based on the three C's. Concept about implementing a specific DNA and an identity into the squad. Hmm. Almost like that's the first one there. Talking about a defining style. Competence. Getting the right people in the right positions. Hmm. Almost like you're asking whether they can actually play in the system. Okay. And then capital. Cash to carry out that overhaul. I know a lot of you 
well, pretty much all of us know that Ralph Rannick was a failure as a manager at Manchester United. But this idea of implementing that sort of identity and philosophy, it was exactly what Ralph Rannick was trying to do at Manchester United. He just wasn't able to do it. Now, whether you want to blame the players for that, whether you want to blame Ralph for being a poor coach for that, that's your decision. But there's crossover, and I can see that's why there, I thought there was continuity, hopefully, between Ragnik and Ten Hag. Obviously, it hasn't exactly worked out that way. But going back to this, right, this is something I really want to ask you in the comments, and you need to let me know. Can they outrun people? Can they outplay people? Outfight people? If we were to take a look at this first team squad, how many of these could you genuinely say that Ten Hag can trust to outrun people, to outplay people, to outfight people? I think you can probably put some trust in David De Gea. Yeah, Tom Heaton, Dean Henderson. No, I don't think he can at this point. And then when you go down to this defence, no, you can't trust Lindelof. To, no, you can't trust By Jones, Maguire, Varane. I mean, the jury's out given he had a quite a shaky season, but I think he's got such a long track record of doing it and winning that I think he can trust him. I don't think he can trust Delo or Shaw or Tellez or Wan-Bissaka. Obviously can't trust Williams at Twan Zebe and Mengi because they really haven't, well, They've been out on loan. Same, and Alvaro Fernandez is a youth team player coming through. Bob has gone. Matt has gone. Lingard's gone. Pereira should be going. Ahmad spent a long time out on loan. Fred, he can trust to do that. Fernandez, I think he can trust to do that. Pellistri spent time out on loan. Matic is gone. Donny van der Beek, I think he'll absolutely be able to say that he can trust him to do it. James Garner. I probably would put him down, yes, but that's maybe a generous yes because we don't really know. And you might not like him. You might think he's limited, but in terms of a work rate, in terms of actually outrunning, yes. Outplaying, probably not. Annabelle, not sure about him just yet in terms of whether he can trust him or not. And going down to the forwards, you can definitely say he can trust Ronaldo. I don't think he can trust Martial. I don't think he can trust Rashford at the moment. Well, I won't mention Mason. Cavani's gone. Sancho, I think he can absolutely trust him. Ilanga, I think he can absolutely trust him. And then Chong. Shoratiro and Garnacho. I think you can probably. He can't trust Garnacho yet. But yeah, I think he probably will be able to, sir. So. Got it. I'll give Garnacho one. If I'm going to give Garnacho one, probably should get Hannibal, Hannibal one then. But look how few players I've got green ticks next to there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Not enough for a full squad. I don't think really we've got a squad there that can out. Absolutely do exactly this. Outrun people, outplay people, outfight people. That's the mentality that we need in the squad. And that's part of this whole master plan. And we all know exactly how that is going to be changed. And it's recruitment. And this is where it all revolves around this summer. James Ducker there, right, titling that forget old glitzy signings. Ten Hag wants to run with a lean squad next season. Now, in terms of leaning down, pogba has gone, Lingard's gone, matter has gone, Matic has gone, Cavani's gone. And Pereira's gone. Sorry, uh, and Grant is gone. Six players already have left. More will leave. We do need a lean squad, and it's getting leaner. Uh, he's talking. You see the names that are getting linked down there. Frankie de Jong. It might happen. It might not. Ruben Neves. You know what I think about Ruben Neves. I've been saying it for a couple of years now. Declan Rice too much. Drew Bellingham too much. Maybe we can have conversations about one or both of those next summer. Neither of them are going to be having this summer. And if the, the idea there about old glitzy signings is probably a reason why I'm just a bit scared about the idea of signing N'Golo Kante. It could work. It could be brilliant. It could be absolutely outstanding. I don't think it would turn out to be another Alexis Sanchez, although I didn't actually... Did we, did we sign him when he was 31? I don't think he would, work, he, he would become a mercenary like that. But the injury record... Mm. It just makes it a bit of a concern to rebuild a team around a 31-year-old. If Kante's there is basically a stopgap before we sign Declan Rice, then you can semi-understand the plan and the ploy. But I'm not sure. It's a, it, as I said, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because I do, I do think we need to move away from old, glitzy signings. And we need to move towards signing young and hungry players. And that has to be part of this overall plan, which he's doing. How are we going to fix this squad? I don't think the 31-year-old Kante truly fixes it. Might be a stopgap, but he doesn't fix it. If we're looking at, in terms of fixing actually inside the squad too, we've spoken about this quite a lot. The idea of Sancho and Rashford are, are, are named by James Ducker there about players that he needs to unlock the true potential of. 
But there are plenty more inside that squad as well that just need to be better footballers. And I think Eric Ten Hag will get more out of them. Really good point there that's raised by James Ducker towards the end of the paragraph. Then United believe he needs the structure that Ten Hag is expected to bring. And in the right environment, Sancho's got all the tools to become a bona fide star. And I absolutely agree with that. You look at what he did, what he learned at Guardiola and what he played in at Dortmund. It was a very specific style. If you're looking here, you know full weather, whether he's playing on the left or the right. Under Ten Hag, there will be a very specific style next year. Everyone's going to know their role. There won't be any confusion about what each player is doing week in, week out. Because that's chopped and changed so much. Each player will know their defined position and role. And I think that will get more out of the likes of Rashford and Sancho. And I'm looking forward to that. This one's a big one, though. In terms of this overall plan, how to fix this ailing squad. He's got to get it right with the captaincy. It's such a... um an important situation. And if you look there in the second paragraph, maybe this is going to be his way out of doing it and avoiding fracturing the dressing room. Radnick suggested that the captain should be democratically elected by the players via a squad vote. Now, do you think that's the right thing to do? Yes or no? Or do you, do you want to see Eric Ten Hag just taking that responsibility on himself? But it's right there. It's imperative that he finds a way to pull this dressing room together and avoid factions and cliques. Basically, there's, I would say that's nigh on impossible for Eric Ten Hag. I think he's instead got to decide who he wants in his, in his, on his boat, on his ship, and who he decides is, is dispensable. Because if you take the captaincy away from Maguire, well, I, well, I think it's, it's, it needs to happen. It absolutely has to happen. Whether Maguire then refines his form, the sort of form he has for England, and becomes a better player for us, but that's besides the point. He needs to take the armband away from him because he's, he's symbolic of everything that we've done wrong and everything we've just accepted at the club for a long time. For Maguire to keep his armband after the performances he put in last season, not setting off on the right foot. In the same way that Ten Hag came in early to set the tone and set an example for how that squad needs to fix up and look sharp, as Dizzy Rascal would, would say. Big up Dizzy Rascal. One of the best albums. I love that album. Corner in the corner. Big up. Uh, anyway, got distracted there. But he can't just let Maguire keep that armband. I think that will be a massive, massive mistake. That's got to change. I don't know who is going to get it. I don't know how he manages it. But that has to happen. And then the final point here, talking about better promotion of youth talent. Now, James Garner, of course, is named as probably the young player who should be coming through. But I've already done a separate video on the likes of Hannibal Medjbury, on Alvaro Fernandez. I spoke about Charlie McNeil, too. We've just won the under-18s FA Youth Cup, first time in a decade. And the Moons, the stars are aligning for our youth and a manager coming in who's got a real eye on promoting youth and promoting youth properly. But I've really found that, that article interesting from James Ducker, how Eric Ten Hag is going to fix this. What is his plan? His master plan is very simple. How, how is he going to get this squad towards winning the Champions League by 2024? It's implementing all of these things there that we discussed defining style that has to happen he needs to make sure that he implements these philosophies can they outrun people can they outplay people can they outfight people it's cliche but shit we need cliches at united we've been that bad and i pointed towards the fact that this is kind of a thing that ragnick wanted to do but was unable to do because the squad just didn't do it and i think that's because basically you can't really trust too many members of this squad and i stand by that and that's why we've needed such a clear out and why more need to go we talked about we need a switch in recruitment, moving from glitzy signings to improving the overall squad. Ronaldo being captain or Maguire. And youth, it's a big summer. It's a big plan. We started it. I'm excited. I keep getting, I don't know, just it feels like the club's moving in the right direction. May well have egg on my face coming into the season when it all spectacularly falls apart. I don't think it will. Not under this man. I think we've actually got a real genuine leader who can lead and lead through the storms as well and not really get too distracted and change direction and throw all his plans out. He's going to stick to them, make sure that they work. Because that's the only way that this Manchester United squad truly will get fixed. If Eric Ten Hag stays true to his word and just sticks at it, I think that that's needed as well as good recruitment and as well as everything else that we spoke about in this video. But you let me know what you think about all of that in the comments below. What do you think about the master plan? Not the album from the Oasis. From the Oasis? I can't believe I just said that. Oh dear, oh dear. I like Oasis. Um, but what do you think about it all? You let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Take it easy.